let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is um, ask people to X up in fleet if they can fly an interceptor. And by fleet, I mean class. Got a number of uh, got a number of interceptor pilots already in here. Um, and then um, folks who are like uh, like Rokai a couple of days away, but are training for it in the process, go ahead and put a T in fleet or in class. Nope, Tish, you're fine. Jump into channel. Okay, so I got a lot of people who are currently training directly for it. Great. And then put a Q in class if you are don't really know what these interceptor things are. You're just here to learn about a new ship, and you might want to fly it, but you're not quite sure. Um, that gives me some idea of the demographics. It looks like yeah, most folks uh, don't really know what interceptors are about. That's great. You're going to get the most out of this class. Those of you who are training for interceptors and have already decided you want to fly it, um, hopefully you'll be able to learn some things about fitting and, and flying strategy and, and some resources that you can you can read up on. Those of you who are already flying interceptors like me, I have found that sitting in on even the basics classes uh, teaches you some stuff. I just listened to GLEPS. Uh, Fleet Tackle 201 class, um, and uh, I learned a couple of things about interceptors from Gleb. Yes, I think uh, Nistron is recording this class, actually, Stuza, so there will be a recording. Uh, Nis, when, when you're done uh, cleaning that recording up, if you could let me know where you put it so that I can link it in the, you know, link your classes here thingy. Thank you. All right, so if we could keep the chatter in class.uni down to a minimum, um, I have sometimes some difficulty keeping up with questions in these classes, so I'll use that as a space to, for people to ask questions. Um, most things are going to be uh, dealt with via mumble just because uh, my typing speed isn't as fast as my mouth, in case uh, those of you haven't already noted, I do tend to talk very quickly. So um, if you have questions, feel free to ask them in class.uni at any time. Please do not key up on mumble. Um, I tend to answer questions when I notice them, so if I don't answer your question relatively quickly, um, then uh, go ahead and ask it again. Uh, Tish Barbosa asks, should I be an Aldrat? Uh, nope, this is just a lecture. You can be docked up anywhere. I'm in Jita myself. Um, I will be picking up some stuff for the war and then heading over to Drat. There's no practical, so there's no place you got to be. I do recommend, however, that you are docked up. Um, it's a lot harder to, to pay attention to a class when you're flying in space, and it's also uh, real easy to get distracted and fly through, say, a smart bombing gate camp in Ranser. Um, when you're not uh, paying attention uh, because you're listening to a class instead. So, uh, docked up is best up. So the first thing I'm going to link is the syllabus I'm going to be using. And it's not so much a syllabus as it is the uh, Interceptors Guide. You'll note that when you uh, click on Interceptors 1, you're going to wind up at the Interceptors Guide. It's a redirect from our wiki, but I think that that's okay because this Interceptors Guide is uh, a really solid guide. I'm going to follow its rough format. Um, I'll be taking some tangential deviations to wander off from topic to topic as I am wont to do from time to time. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. If you want to follow along, you are welcome to do your best. So, interceptors. What's that all about? Oh, don't worry, Tabla. The, the Rainbow Dash macros come later. Um, the, uh, the Interceptor is, as I'm sure many of you know, the fastest ship class in EVE, except for possibly the Dramiel and the Daredevil, or pirate frigates, and don't even really get to count as proper ships. They're just kind of abominations to the frigate world. Um, basically, my Ares, which is what I fly because I fly Galente, um, with a decent booster and an overheat on my micro-warp drive without even really trying, I can do upwards of 8 kilometers a second. Something like that. Um, that means that if I land on grid from, say, uh, Naga, which is a sniping tier three battlecruiser, um, and he sees that, uh, you know, he, he shows up at about a hundred, a hundred kilometers off, and, uh, I start a dead run right for him, which is not recommended, but let's say for the, for the sake of argument that I do, um, I need to travel 70 kilometers in order to, uh, get within my 30 kilometer point range. Um, interceptors have a longer point range, and I'll get to get to that in a bit. And uh, I can accomplish that with acceleration and some some slowdown at the end in order to establish a stable orbit in just under 10 seconds. Most people who fly sniper boats, for example, are not ready to have tackle on them that darn quickly. Um, space police, who we're about to go to war with, are ready for that, because I've kind of been abusing them horribly with my Ares. Um, if you see a guy by the name of, uh, I believe his name is uh, Morgan Raj, he really hates Ares. In particular, he really hates Ares coming after his Naga. It gets him all kinds of full of tears and local. It's fantastic. 
Um, and that's, that brings me to, to the real point of, of the interceptor. The, the interceptor is equal parts ridiculous speed and, uh, just sort of unrelenting aggression. Um, the, you will find interceptors extremely enjoyable if you like going really fast. You will find flying interceptors enjoyable if you like, if your first instinct on seeing another ship in space is to get up in his face and ruin his day, interceptors are the ship class for you. As I'm sure all, all of you know, um, you're, you're taught this from the very beginning of, uh, of, of PVP in, in EVE University. Uh, tackle. Tackle, 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 tackle. Um, tackle is the most important thing. Uh, without tackle, there are no kills. And so the Interceptor is a Tech 2 frigate class that has been purpose-built um, to tackle. That's all that it does. So yeah, so uh, tackle, tackle, tackle. Uh, that is the name of the game. That is what we are talking about. Generally speaking, frigate tacklers, um, those XTFs that we love to see in Alliance, um, that are usually uh, you know a PVPer's first PVP role. Um, they are really, really useful and really, really important. But they tend to explode a lot. Um, it's that micro warp drive. It blows up their signature um, to five times its normal size, so they have the sig radius of a cruiser, which means they take, you know, reasonable amounts of damage from battleship guns. They don't really have a lot of tanks, so they get explodified really quickly, and they're just not super fast. As you'll note, if you've ever been in a in a uh, fleet with a uni, you'll get kited by hurricanes, you'll get kited by drakes, you'll get kited by cinnables, you'll get kited, you'll get kited, you'll get kited, and it's because that even with a micro warp drive, uh, frigate have a hard time getting up to the the fast enough speed that they can quickly close on these nano drakes that are doing like two and a half kilometers a second. Um, so gosh darn it, if only we had a frigate that was super, super fast. And if only we had a frigate that didn't have this massive signature when it turned on its micro warp drive. And you know what? While we're on the subject, if only we had a frigate that got some kind of range bonus to points so that it could grab people faster and orbit them farther away to stay out of trouble. Well, my friends, Interceptors are that class. Uh, interceptors come in two flavors. Uh, they come in Fleet Interceptor, and they come in Combat Interceptor. For the most part, this class is going to focus on Fleet Interceptors, be, because that is what fleets benefit from, hence the name Fleet Interceptor, and also because Combat Interceptors are, uh, are a very, uh, let's just say they're not very forgiving of pilot error. Um, the, the most common combat interceptor that you'll see out there is the Tyrannus. Um, until the assault frigate buff, the Tyrannus was regarded as one of the best assault frigates in the game, and it's not even an assault frigate. Um, there is a, there's a saying about flying a Tyrannus. When you fly a Tyrannus, you get into a fight, and somebody dies. The hard part is making the Tyrannus, thank you, Carl, uh, the hard part is making the, the Tyrannus not the ship that dies. So I am going to focus on fleet interceptors. Um, my own experience sort of biases me in this case. I got into flying interceptors by flying an Ares, and uh, I've just been having so much fun in it. Um, the, the Tyrannus is going to be kind of my next step, but the uh, I found that fleet interceptors are extremely forgiving of pilot error, um, and so they make sort of a good first step into the world of interceptors. So that is what interceptors are. That is what they do. Um, the fleet interceptors... Um, in particular, you can tell them apart from the combat interceptors because in addition to um, the interceptor bonus to micro warp drive signature radius penalty, which means at interceptors 5, you have a 75% reduction in sig bloom. Your sig bloom is 500%, is 500% which means that your sig bloom at 100 or at inties 5 is only 125%, which means if you have a sig of 40 meters, instead of uh, what would normally happen on a frigate is that it would become 200. Instead, what happens is you wind up at 50 meters. Now, to put things into perspective, uh, a frigate has a uh, about a 40 meter sig. It gets, some are smaller, some are bigger. Um, and a uh, cruiser has a 125 meter sig on average. And as day four notes, or day four notes, um, 200 meters is pushing battle cruiser signature. Um, to put things into perspective further, a battleship's gun is intended for a target with a 400 meter or larger signature size, and uh, you're getting up to half that in a frigate, which means that a frigate with its micro-warp drive on, under optimal conditions, would take half of the uh, nominal DPS of a battleship. 
and battleships can put out ridiculous. And yeah, Violet Giraffe. Um, it's my understanding that the Sig Bloom is um, is a multiplier, so 125 uh, percent. Well, actually, you know what? I can test this. Hang on. Sorry, my mistake. Um, Violet Giraffe is correct. Uh, it uh, it does become about 90. Um, so yeah, it is it is plus 125 percent. But even so, uh, 90 is still much smaller than a cruiser, whereas uh, 200 is um, you know much bigger or is pushing battle cruiser size. So uh, 90 is still a, a tremendously reduced uh, Sig Bloom. The other thing to keep in mind is because of the way the gunnery formula works, um, the uh, micro warp drive, if you were moving tangent to your uh, bearing to an opponent, so basically if you're moving at the, at the direction that would create the maximum amount of transversal, you go five times faster, but you are five times bigger. Um, and so what winds up happening there is the micro warp drive under the optimum conditions is a wash. And let's face it, you're very rarely under optimal conditions. Um, with the interceptor, you can afford to not be generating all of that speed and transversal and still get a speed tank benefit um, from just the five, uh, from just the, uh, the, the the big speed boost that you get. And with skills like acceleration control, which increase the boost that you get from the micro warp drive, uh, you can get a, a pretty ridiculous speed tank out of an interceptor. And they already have, you know, very high speeds. In addition, uh, the Interceptor's signature starts smaller as part of its Tech 2 bonus. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very small ship to begin with, and, uh, and its bonuses keep it, keep it that nice and small. The other benefit that Interceptors get is also the 80% reduction in propulsion jamming system's activation cost. That's the cap to run that long point. And if you've ever run a long point on a frigate for any length of time, you know that those suckers just sort of suck your cap dry. Um, and so between that and the micro warp drive, uh, you're, you're have a, you have a very large cap demand. My Ares with Interceptors 5, um, and, uh, high speed maneuvering 4 is cap stable running its point and its micro warp drive. And that's really what you want to aim for is you want to get your ship cap stable running its speed tank module, which is the micro warp drive and running its tackle module because that's your primary mission. But the differences in these ships start at the fleet and combat indies. The fleet indies, um, in addition to having uh, the highest warp speed in the game, the the Kobops frigate can do 13.5 AU per second. The fleet interceptor can also do 13.5 AU per second. Um, they also tend to have slightly higher base speeds. They also tend to be slightly more agile. They have um, much faster lock times because of a higher scan res. And uh, in addition to all that, they get a 5% bonus to Warp Scrambler and Warp Disruptor range per level of the Interceptor skill. So my Interceptor skill is, um, uh, if they're rigged for that Joram, yes, but their base speed is, is I believe, 13.5, at least my Helios is, unless they also changed that recently. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, they're basically, they're super fast to warp, which means uh, on long warps, if, uh, for example, you're, you see a battleship start to align and warp off and it hits warp before you hit the warp button, you can align, go to warp, pass them in warp, and land on grid before they get to you, um, which, which is really, really a huge, a huge advantage. The ability to watch where an opponent is going and then meet him at his destination uh, is, is really, I've, I've done that to people. I did it to a nightmare once that I got tackle on. And, uh, yeah, it was fantastic. And, yes, as, as uh, Neve notes, um, the, the fleet interceptor, everything about the fleet interceptor um, is designed to do two things well. One is to move from point A to point B very quickly, and two, to get first point. If it's on a gate, you lock them the moment they drop their gate cloak. You have the point on them, you know, momentarily. In most gate camping situations, you sit at zero on the gate, and everything spawns within your point and link and lock range. Um, so yeah, everything about the fleet interceptor is to get that first point. Combat entities, on the other hand, um, tend to have more flexible slot layouts. Uh, they tend to have more power grid, and um, they they're instead of having a, a tackle range bonus, they get usually a weapon bonus of some kind. So, for example, the Tyrannus um, it gets uh, a double strength damage bonus from the Ares, and it also gets the the Ares' uh, tracking. So, basically, it it does uh, uh, twice as much extra damage as the Ares does, and it by the way can fit three blasters, whereas the Ares is generally restricted to two guns. So uh, the, the Tyrannus is a, is a DPS monster if it's flown correctly. Um, the, uh, 
The other bonus is the crow is of particular interest here, and I'll get to why. Um, because while the crow is generally considered to be a poor uh, interceptor, uh, in large part because I think if it's missile focus and people just still don't necessarily want to fly missile boats for PvP, although the rocket buff and now the new prettier missiles are probably going to change that, is that the crow is the combat interceptor that can serve as a very effective uh, drake catcher because of just the sheer number of fender missiles that it can spam out. Um, and we'll get to defender souls in a little bit. So yeah, so uh, so combat interceptors are more about getting up in close and uh, and putting the gank on. Oh, don't worry, Capo, I'll cover the stiletto. Yeah, people don't love uh, have no love for the Keldari interceptors. Frankly, the interceptor's role is to get point, and all of the interceptors are very very good at that. All right, let's talk briefly about skills. Obviously, the skill, the first skill that you're going to need is um, uh, the interceptor skill. Uh, you need level 1 to even sit in the hull. You really, 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 and I mean really, 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 want to have Interceptors 4 before you even start to fly. Uh, this is no joke. Like logistics ships, um, the bonuses that the Interceptors give you with the Interceptor skill level um, are very dramatic, and so you do really want... Uh, to have interceptors up to four, I recommend if you find if you go to interceptors four and you find that you really like flying these things, take it to five. It's absolutely worth it. Um, one of the things that happens as you increase the radius of a sphere is that the area that is covered by that sphere goes up dramatically. Um, I actually think it's an exponential curve, but I'm no good at 3D geometry. Um, because of that, it means that that last little 5% onto, um, oh yeah, sorry, the volume. See, I, I, this is me already sucking at 3D geometry. But yeah, it does, it does go up, uh, exponentially. So that little 5% on the end for Interceptors 5 just adds this huge amount of space that you can now point within. And it gives you just tremendous tactical flexibility, it lets you grab stuff on larger gates. Uh, it's, it's, it is fantastic and absolutely worth it. Um, the, the guide talks about some other skills that you're going to need. Propulsion jamming, uh, this should be a no-brainer. Your job is to point. Propulsion jamming is the pointing skill. You really want to have the pointing skill at a, at a good level. And the pointing skill makes the, the points uh, less cap-dependent, so uh, definitely worth worth doing. And if you decide that you really like tackling and you want to go into better tackle stuff like, uh, like interdictors and whatnot, you're going to need propulsion jamming 5 anyway. High-speed maneuvering um, is the skill that you need for micro-warp drive use. Micro-warp drives, you don't get a bonus on the cap. Um, so uh, for micro-warp drives, uh, generally speaking, um, uh, that skill is the only way you're going to reduce how much capacitor they need. Uh, so I do recommend that at at least four. And again, if you find yourself flying things that use micro-warp drives a lot, and now that they can be used in mission spaces, there's really no reason not to, um, definitely consider getting that skill to five because it does save you a lot of capacitor power. Hull upgrades, uh, you need at least level 2 in order to fit Tech 2 nanofiber and overdrive injectors. Hull upgrades um, is a, uh, yes, uh, Zoc, micro-warp drives can be used in uh, mission space. Uh, yes, Arthoris, interceptors and interdictors are entirely different. Um, interdictors are very slow, very fragile, and they launch warp interdiction bubbles. They are, they are a form of tackle, so in that they have that in common. They can only be used in, in null sec. Um, interceptors, on the other hand, can be used anywhere up to and including high sec, which is why EVE Uni makes use of them, and they are intended to grab a single target rather than a whole fleet at once. And they're also much harder to kill. Um, Matthew Tenchi has just linked hull upgrades. Thank you. That's a 5% bonus to your armor hit points per skill. I recommend that at 5 for any ship you fly ever. It is a core fitting skill, and it's worth having at 5. But to get into an interceptor, you really just need it at, um, at uh, 2. Yes, yeah, Arthoris. Um, that's my... If, if you find that you really enjoy tackling and you want to go into serious tackling, interdictors and heavy interdictors is kind of the next step up. Uh, but interceptors are a very different class of ship, and they are flown in a very different way. But yeah, um, so hull upgrades is uh, is is just a great ship is a great skill to have at five period. So I strongly recommend everyone trains it. More armor hit points never hurt anyone, and those armor points are fat free. They do not slow you down. They do not uh, uh, make you make you slower to turn. Uh, but yeah, if you have it at two, you're good because you're going to be using it mostly to fit nanofibers and, and overdrive injectors. I'll get to that other skill under necessary skills in a bit. Uh, I actually disagree with the guide here, and I think. Uh, some other skills are super important here. Um, basic fitting skills, electronics and engineering, you should have that at five. More power grid, more CPU, never hurt anybody, and that'll be useful in any ship you ever fly. Seriously, get those up. 
And yeah, T2 armor mods. No one armor tanks interceptors unless they're doing something wacky. Um, and I'll get to why in a bit. But basically, the short version is armor tank slows you down. And the whole point of the interceptor is to be super fast. Um, but yeah, I, I have, I have in fact armor tanked my Ares at one point, and I'll get to why in a bit. Um, actually, the Ares can mount, mount a monster hull tank if you want to get crazy. Okay, so uh, navigation. Someone could link the navigation skill for me. The navigation skill makes you go faster. I'm pretty sure that's self-explanatory. Um, I really, really, really recommend you get that to level 5, especially for interceptors. For big battleships, you know, another 5% here or there isn't really, you know, that much. It's like maybe 7 or seven or 8 meters per second. But on an interceptor, on my interceptor, that last 5% throws another 35 meters per second, which when I turn on the micro warp drive means I'm getting another 200 meters per second out of it. And when I overheat, I'm getting more like three or 400 meters per second. That's a big difference. Difference. That's the difference between uh, someone with a faction a oversized afterburner and a standard oversized afterburner. So, um, you know, that last 5% on Navigation 5 really matters for interceptors. Definitely get it. Acceleration control, I recommend at least level 4. It makes your micro warp drive go even zoomier. Um, so uh, getting that at 4 is good. If you really, like I said, if you find yourself flying with a lot of constant running micro warp drives and afterburners, there's just no reason not to go to 5. That's going to be my next train is acceleration control 5. But at 4, you, it's a fairly quick train to get up there, and uh, it does really pour on the speed. Uh, spaceship command, um, I'm pretty sure you need it at 5 as a prerequisite for interceptors. Uh, but it makes your ship turn tighter. Uh, tight orbits are in the name of the game for Inties. Get that to five. Again, that's just useful no matter where you are. It cuts down your align time on any ship you ever fly. Signature analysis. Um, recommend it to four. Um, I got it to five because um, uh, the uh, I, I, it's a, a requirement for... Um, for logistics, I think. I forget what it was, but it was, it was important for something I'd use. Uh, but anyway, the um, signature analysis gets you a faster lock time. Faster lock times lets you grab people in smaller ships as they drop their gate cloak and start to align. Keep in mind, when a ship goes into warp at a gate, you don't see them until they've already begun aligning. It takes the human brain about half a second to respond. It takes the game another second to respond. So that's a second and a half of free align time that they get. And so if it's a five-second align, you now have three and a half seconds to do something about that. Um, it, it takes you a certain amount of time to lock. It takes you a certain amount of time to get your point on. And so uh, signature analysis cuts down the amount of time that it takes to lock. The shorter your lock time, the faster you can get point. The faster you can get point, the smaller the ship you can tackle at a gate. With signature analysis 5 and a fleet interceptor with no set, no, no SIBOs and no uh, targeting rigs, I am able to grab most Tech 1 frigates. Uh, Liam, a pro interceptor who's really serious about his lock time can have about a half second lock time, which technically is faster than the game can even register. And that's against like, you know, frigates and stuff. You can, you can grab pods with that very easily. And, and that's really what you, you use that for is grabbing pods. Uh, Faith, a T1 frig can lock an interceptor up in about three to five seconds. And yeah, there's, there's skill levels at play here. Um, so long range targeting, um, one of the things that will happen if you don't have long-range targeting 5 is that your point range will be longer than your base targeting range. Uh, get long-range targeting 5. Being able to target it far away doesn't really really hurt anybody. And an interesting thing about all these skills, by the way, um, is that they're all int mem skills, I think, except for acceleration control, navigation, and spaceship command. So uh, if you're, if you're going to do a core skill training, I recommend you remap to int mem, plug in some plus 4 int mem implants, plus 5 so you can afford it, and then just crank away at it. But long-range targeting, at 5, you will be able to target just a little bit farther than you can point at base, and that's sort of a good balance to have. Uh, my rule when I fly my Ares is if I can lock it, I can point it, and that's a very happy place to be. Um, energy management, energy systems operation, get those to four or five. Those are your capacitor skills. They increase your capacitor and your capacitor recharge, uh, and increasing your capacitor increases its recharge as well. Um, you really, really, really want to, to just have those skills handy. And Matthew, Wolgrin, I think, is looking ahead in the syllabus and figuring out uh, what I'm going to say next and then pasting it. Um, astronautics rigging uh, is for navigation rigs. I also recommend electronics rigging. Um, but these are super important. Just get them at whatever you need them. You can have someone else rig your ship for you if you have to. But um, if you're going to fly with rigs, and, and you will, figure out what rigs you prefer and go ahead and, uh, and, and have those on. 
Uh, electronic superiority rigging, there it is. And then shield upgrades. Okay, shield upgrades 4 is mandatory. All right, this is a required skill because the medium shield extender tech 2 is your tank. Almost every single interceptor that goes out goes out with a medium shield extender tank to fit. It's so important that I'm linking the item. Um, when I buy interceptors, and I buy them by the dozen, I also buy those by the dozen, because those uh, modules are super important. So be able to fit them. And then we come down to my favorite skill. I trained this skill to five because I was int mem spec and bored. Thermodynamics. In addition to giving you the ability to frown in an ins whenever you hear someone mention a perpetual motion unit, um, this reduces the heat damage your module heat. Interceptors are about being the fastest of the fast. They are about being the, the quickest to the point. And so uh, what they do with these things is they, they you want to be pushing your machine to the absolute limit. I overheat my micro warp drive on my Ares almost every fight. Um, and because I have thermodynamics 5, I can get usually one free cycle of overheat without taking any heat damage whatsoever, and that is a fantastic thing. Nanite interfacing and all the nanite paste using repair skills will help as well, but the important thing is that you can overheat stuff without burning it out. And that's skills. Are there any questions to this point? Uh, Kippo, that was with overheat and someone providing me a rapid deployment gang link booster, but it wasn't even a very good rapid deployment booster. It was kind of like the bare minimum that you can provide. If I max this puppy out with someone with maxed out tech 2 gang links and the whole 9 yards, I could probably squeeze it all the way up to 10 kilometers a second. With Thermodynamics 5, Rinna, I can probably get about 3 or 4 cycles uh, without burning it out. Keep in mind that it, I think it's 10 seconds per cycle. That means I can have covered basically a warpable range at that point. So uh, there really isn't much that you'd want to do. The average max without links and boost, my Ares can do 72 overheated, uh, and it does 4080 just running on normal. And 4,000 meters per second is still obscenely fast. When you consider that the average kiting battlecruiser does about 2.5, um, I can really, really catch up close. And there are, I will show you guys some kills that I've uh, that have happened because of my interceptor, and one of them includes a Tengu with a battleship afterburner that was doing very consistently 2,800 even when we scrammed it. Um, we had to get like seven webs on the thing before it went down, and it wound up being worth like 2.8 billion or something. Uh, Neve, you get the same on your interceptors with what resistance tank? You mean an armor resistance tank? I'd love to see your fit, because I do mine with metagear. Uh, so, yeah, so while we're getting that, let me see. Okay, I'm looking at that fit. Oh, do you only have two mid-slots on the Crusader? Yeah, okay, so the Crusader is, is one of the exceptions to the, um, to the shield tank rule. Uh, you cannot shield tank a Crusader, but the, shield tank, the Crusader is also not the fleet interceptor. I believe the Malediction does fly shield tanked. Let me see how many mid-slots it has. Yeah, I would fly my, um, I would fly my, uh, my Malediction shield tanked. Um, you don't have to, you can fly it with just a, uh, let's see, you go, oh, you got a web on that thing. So I don't like the web on the Malediction, it doesn't get a range bonus on its web, and so if you're within web range, so are they, and that means they'll web you down. Yeah, okay, if it's for a duel, that's fine, um, and I've got no problem, I've got less of a problem. Yeah, the Malediction has 5% bonuses to armor resistances, but how many armor hit points does it have? And the thing that you want to, you want to consider is you need the ability, um, to go fast, have good tank, um, and getting good tank, even with a resistance fit, is, is hard. And as Victus Vega points out, um, yeah, and the, the mal fit on this page just has a, um, uh, Sir Magdos, it's chat.e-uni. Um, the, uh, the, the malediction fit that they have is just a, is just a briefcase tank. And I don't care for just briefcase tanks, I like stronger tanks than that, but, um, you, you could totally fly a non-tanked interceptor, and, and it'll be fine. There was a guy named Cycle who used to fly interceptors uh, for the uni, and he used to just fly with no tank at all. That's the briefcase. If you look at the icon for that module, it's a briefcase, hence the briefcase tank. And yeah, the armor resistance buffer tank um, or the, uh, the briefcase tank doesn't blow up your SIG the way the medium shield extender does, but to be honest, interceptor SIGs are so small, it's okay. So let's talk about fitting, since we've already started to talk about fitting. Uh, there are fits on that page. Um, but as Neve, you know, as Neve has brought up, you know, there are obviously there are ships like the Crusader that you can't shield tank, um, and there are ships like uh, the Tyrannus, which there are reasons to, to sometimes hull tank and whatnot. Interceptor fits um, are uh, very much like um, barbecue sauce recipes or chili recipes. 
Um, everyone's going to do it a little bit differently, and everyone's going to insist that their family's secret recipe is the best secret recipe. Truth be told, um, how you fly your interceptor is going to be a very personal affair, and the fits that are provided on this page are uh, just to get you started. I strongly recommend that you adjust your fits accordingly uh, to your play style and what you think is important, um, because uh, the, the Interceptor doesn't have a lot to work with, but it does have a lot of modules that could benefit one part or another. Uh, yeah, Hermes, hang on. And I'll go ahead and link my Ares fit for you guys. Um, I have flown uh, 26 Ares with this fit. That's my Vitae fit. I am currently on Vitae 27. Yes, that means I've lost 26 Ares's. Um, 25 of them had that fit. One of them was an armor tank experiment that went horribly awry when I ran into a uh, railgun fit. Uh, and, you know. Yep, that's a decent Raptor fit. Actually, the only change I'd make to that Raptor fit, if I was going to fly it, would be I'd just drop one of the uh, the 75mm rails for a rocket launcher, like I basically fly my Ares. Um, and that's because the rocket launcher is important. I'll talk about the different modules now. And then remember, you guys you know, can use these as a base starting point and figure out how you want to tweak them. Um, you'll note that I don't fly my MSC Ares the way uh, that fit is. Um, I do not carry uh, the... Oh, well, maybe they've changed it. Oh, yeah, I don't use a nano and a signal amp. I use a double overdrive for more speed because I tend to, to find myself in a lot of flat run chase situations. Uh, rocket launcher is not for close range, Matthew, actually. As Z notes, they are for defender missiles. And defender missiles just underwent a massive change, and I'm not sure how the light defender missiles versus the heavy defender missiles thing is going to work because when they started it, light defender missiles uh, weren't seated. Uh, yeah, there's no light missiles in the market. I just bought the BPO. I will be making them in the heck area, so if you want to fly with light defender missiles, I hope to have missiles for you for this war. You can use it to pile on damage at point blank, as Neve points out, and occasionally I will do that, but as she notes, there's really no point. Your job is not DPS. Your job is to tackle. Um, you know, if you wind up at point blank range and you just want to pile on some DPS for kill mail whoring or whatever, fine, um, but you should uh, bring rockets with you. In fact, you, if you can fit... Um, the Tech 2 launcher and Tech 2 rockets, you should bring precision rockets with you. The reason you bring rockets with you is for the same reason that you have 75mm rails on the Ares or projectile weapons on the Stiletto or what have you, is that you want to be able to kill drones, okay? Uh, Kupo in a fleet interceptor, not much. I have soloed rookie ships. I have soloed uh, three Condors, which is the Kaldari Tech 1 Fast Frigate, and I've soloed a Kestrel once, and the, the problem with the Kestrel was he didn't have anything but missile launchers fit. His mids and his lows were empty. But yeah, that, that's it for fleet interceptors. Any kind of serious combat ship is just going to tear you apart. Um, combat interceptors like the Tyrannus, you can get into a fight with all kinds of stuff, um, but that's for another class. Uh, suffice to say that, that combat interceptors are, are intended to hunt small targets like uh, other interceptors. Um, but yeah, basically, you're not looking to solo in a fleet interceptor. That's the name of the fleet part. You know, you're you're there to support a fleet. But as Neve notes, drones, warrior twos in particular, are super devastating. And unless you're flying the the Crusader or the Malediction, you've got an explosive hole, and you're gonna hurt a lot when those warriors get a hold of you. This is another reason that we shield tank, by the way, because we have a natural 50% explosive resist on our shield. Um, and, uh, and as noted earlier, the shield tank doesn't slow us down. So Warrior 2s are usually the only drones that are even remotely fast enough to catch an interceptor. Hobgoblin 2s do a lot of damage, but they just can't catch up to you. Um, and to be honest, in my, in my Ares, I regularly kite out away from Warrior 2s. They only intermittently are able to apply damage. Um, and so you can, even with a, with a drone boat, um, popping out Warrior 2s, you can generally hold on to it. Now, uh, special note, Arbitrators, Vexers, and Dominixes are a problem. You want to stay away from them because they tend to fit uh, mid-slot drone navigation computers that make drones go faster, and that's bad for you. But yeah, the, the rockets and the 75mm auto, uh, Gatling rails or the small autocannons are there to kill drones. Um, and you can tear through drones pretty quickly. I go through a warrior in about four or five seconds. The other thing you really, really, really hate when you're an interceptor pilot are EC-300 ECM drones. God, those things are annoying. They won't kill you, but they will jam you very easily, and you'll lose your point, and the target will get away, and then your only consolation is that you get to scoop his EC-300s and sell them back to him. Uh, so killing EC-300s is the other super important role. The new webbing drones are not a threat. A, they can't catch you. B, their web, uh, their web of fire amount is really small and suffers a stacking penalty. You'll just burn away from them and just ignore them. Uh, someone is keying up. 
Is that a question or is that just someone hitting the key? Okay. Um, so, uh, modules that you want to be able to fit. Uh, you want to be able to fit, obviously, a Tech 2 point. If you're not putting a Tech 2 point on a Tech 2 ship designed to tackle, you're doing it wrong. Unless you're fitting, like, uh, some kind of weird faction point business. Don't fit weird faction, faction point business. Leave that for those super expensive combat recons. Your ship is disposable. Even though you're a Tech 2 ship and you're much, much tankier and much harder to kill than the Tech 1 tackle frigate, it's still, you're very fragile. Don't, don't faction fit these things. I, like I said, I went through 26 of them this month. Uh, you just, you lose them. Um, so Tech 2 point. Uh, tech 2, uh, most everything. The one thing you don't want to tech 2 is the micro warp drive. You want to use a meta micro warp drive, and you want to use this meta micro warp drive. If you want to fly, thank you. If you want to fly interceptors, you want that micro warp drive added to your market quick bar. If you look at the, the attributes of that, you'll notice that it has, you know, 500% signature radius bloom. Um, you'll have a certain amount of thrust, a lot capacitor bonus, negative 19%. If you look at the Tech 2, you get the same, um, uh, the same speed bonus you get. Oh, hang on, they may have fixed it. That's new. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's not the cap bonus, it's the cap use. That's right. So the difference is the Tech 2, uh, takes 2% less of your cap, which I think is new. I think it used to take slightly more cap. Um, but the Tech 2 needs 50 gigajoules to activate. Whereas the limited only needs 45. So the limited takes 10% less cap to use. Um, and so, uh, you want to use the limited one because it is the cheapest cap cost and it's the easiest to get cap stable with. The Tech 2 micro warp drive gives you the same speed but needs more juice. Also, the limited is just much cheaper than the Tech 2. But that is the only thing that you don't want a Tech 2 fit. I recommend Tech 2 guns if you can, and anything that doesn't hurt your tracking, because you're going to have tracking problems at the speed that you're going. If you're in a boat with a larger capacitor pool, that 2% capacitor hit may hurt more than perma-running the micro-warp drive. It's a, it's a fine-tuned math thing. And, you know, the Amarian boats uh, may even be able to use Tech 2 micro-warp drives without, without hurting, either, because Amarian boats tend to have higher capacitor. I don't fly Amar, so I'm not 100% on that, but that limited 1MN micro-warp drive is also crazy cheap. I think Tech 2s are like a million, and those things are like 25,000. Um, but anyway, uh, so, so micro-warp drives are important. Tech 2 dis warp disruptors for fleet interceptors, long points, long points, long points, long points. You get a range bonus, why not start with the longest range so you get the most bonus? There are reasons to use scrams on fleet interceptors. Um, and in fact, there's a stiletto fit that I'm dying to try. That's a double scram that uses the range bonus uh, to get it like a 13 and a half kilometer scram. And the reason I want to do that is because there are smart bombing battleships out there that have three or four warp core stabs. And uh, I want the, the stiletto as an interceptor, a uh, fleet interceptor is special because it has four mid slots. And so I want the, uh, I would love, someday love to be able to one ship tackle, uh, a quad stabbed disco rock with a stiletto, um, just to watch the pirates and rancer just tear up all over local when all of a sudden they can't go anywhere. Um, the problem with that fit is it has no tank. And so if they get any kind of support at all, you're in trouble. Um, but, uh, but for general purpose, tackling somebody who's in any kind of combat fit, otherwise, long point, long point, long point, long point. The problem with a short point is even on a fleet interceptor, you get into short point range, they can web you, they can scram you, and now you're in trouble. You'll also hear about what's called dual prop stilettos. They have that fourth mid slot, and it just gives them so much flexibility. The stiletto is a fantastic boat. I love my Ares, but uh, when I cross-train for Min Matar so that I can fly Shield Logi, I am looking forward to flying Stilettos as well. The problem with the Stiletto, of course, is that its sensor strength is even worse than the Ares, and so it gets jammed out, no problem. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to know about is guns and rocket launchers. Rocket launchers are better than guns on interceptors. One of the things that happens when uh, when with missiles is you know how you have that... Um, uh, Corbin, yes, I see a lot of claws out. They're a good combat empty. But again, combat empties aren't really the focus of this class. Rockets. So what happens with dr drones and other ships is that you wind up in a what's called a stern chase scenario. The beauty of the stern chase is that you're going in a straight line and your target is going in a straight line behind you. And so you're just shooting straight behind you. There's very little transversal to worry about, despite the extreme speed, and that makes picking off drones easy. But what makes missiles great is that rockets do a tremendous amount of close-range damage, um, 
But when they are stern chasing, remember that the rocket launches and then it moves at its speed for a set amount of time, um, which means when you're shooting in front of you, uh, you have to shoot close enough that anything running away from you, the missile has time to catch it. But when something is coming up behind you, you can shoot from much, much farther away because that rocket is now flying straight away from you and towards them, and they are flying towards the rocket. And that means that you can be 10, 15 kilometers off uh, against, you know, Warrior 2s, and the Warrior 2s will just charge right into the rocket, and it's great. So the rocket range is much stronger behind you against targets that are chasing you than it is under normal, I'm just shooting at something I'm orbiting distances. So rockets are beautiful for taking out uh, drones. And then as noted, they can you can load um, uh, defender missiles into uh, rocket launchers, and better than light missile launchers, rocket launchers have a really good rate of fire, and defender missiles are fantastic. Also, as, as Nis and Telly have noted, um, the most important reason is that missiles look awesome now, and defender missiles uh, in particular, they, they have this MERV effect where they separate into multiple warheads, and you see this like sparkle of blue, and then other missiles are dying, and it's great. But the difference for defender missiles is that when you tackle a drake, and if he starts shooting out precision heavies, you can tank with a medium shield extended Ares, you can tank him for about two minutes, which is fine if the fleet is within one jump. But what if the fleet is five jumps away? Now you're going to lose this target. When you start shooting defender missiles from one rocket launcher, now you can tank that drake for up to five minutes. And that means that if they're three or four jumps out, the fleet can get to you and get a second tackle on that guy before you go down. And in fact, usually you can just disengage. You'll be in armor, you might be on fire, whatever. Welcome to flying an interceptor. The important thing is that you can get away and the target is going to go down because of you. So defender missiles, especially when facing Keldari and Amar, because both those races love them, their missile I always carry at least three full loads of defenders, and I strongly recommend that you carry defenders in, in your rocket launchers. Stuff like the Malediction that can triple rocket launcher basically becomes impervious to missile fire. You can just fly into a pack of drakes with the Malediction and not even worry. The thing to remember, though, is you do have to spam your rocket launcher button because uh, you'll eventually fall out of sync. There won't be any missiles in space, and your missile launcher will turn off. Other important things, uh, autocannons. Autocannons are great. No matter what race you fly, autocannons are fantastic because they don't use cap. Neither do missiles. So rockets and autocannons are the preferred weapons. 75mm Tech 2 railguns are next. And then uh, beam lasers um, if you have to. And uh, preferably using things like standard ammo. Uh, I don't think there are faction defenders, are there? No variation. So that light defender missile one, look for those to go up on the market. I Like I said, I'm buying the BPO. I'm going to start producing them. Give me 48 hours and I'll have them up in the market. Okay. Um, there's also no Tech 2 defenders, I think. It's just defender one. So I've covered overheating. Um, other modules that you might care about are the overdrive injector. Um, and actually, I'm going to link to you link you to a very important page. That wiki page, I think, I forget who was, I think it was Steve345 is a genius, did all of the math for you, and points out the various bonuses that you can get uh, with the stacking penalties for over various combinations of overdrive, nano, inertial stabilizer, and rigs. Uh, study it, learn it, and use it to fine-tune your interceptor fittings. I break that rule because I all I care about is flat run speed, and I'll squeeze every last meter per second, that, and so I fly with double overdrive with polycarb, but um, I'm actually thinking now I might drop one of my polycarbs and put on a targeting range rig for those times when I've got interdiction maneuver boosts. But definitely study that if you're going to be serious about fitting up an interceptor. It will help you figure out how to squeeze the most speed out of, out of it that you can. While we're on the subject of things you should read, that forum thread is GLEP's interceptor class. GLEP also um, did this lecture, which is a fleet interceptors only lecture, and I strongly recommend uh, that you read his thread and listen to his class. GLEP used to be a Unista. He's now with Agony. I believe he's now running Agony Unleashed uh, now that... Um, uh, their main guy, Aswell Skull, has moved on to greener pastures. Glep is a PvP genius, and in particular, a small frigate god. So definitely pay attention to anything Glep says about interceptors. And last but not least, that is your interceptor on interceptor action guide. Uh, there's a zigzag approach down at Maneuver 4 that's very similar to spiraling, which is a technique you can read about elsewhere. Frankly, uh, spiraling and zigzagging are things that are, you either get them or you don't. If you don't get them, don't despair. 
just get out there and fly an interceptor, learn what works, learn what doesn't. Um, it took me about six or seven interceptor lo- interceptors lost before I started to regularly get good points and get kills with them. And it was just a matter of learning your engagement envelope. So if you, when you make the jump to interceptors, buy about, you know, ten of them and just expect to go through more than half of those, just making stupid new mistakes. Uh, hopefully... Having you know been in this class, you'll be able to avoid them. But they really do fly like nothing else in Eve, and so it, it is going to take just some time behind the stick to sort of figure out what works and what doesn't, and what works in particular for your style. So other modules that you may care about are things that improve your lock range, your lock time. Uh, so sensor boosters, signal amplifiers, uh, brief. Cases are super important. As I said, with the Ares, you can actually get a ridiculous uh, amount of EHP out of a hull tank, although you're pretty slow. Um, you know, try a number of things and, and see what works. So now we're going to talk about how to fight interceptors briefly because uh, countering interceptors is an important thing to understand. Uh, when you're flying an interceptor, you need to know when you're, you're heading into a bad situation. As noted, drones, Warrior twos are the problem. The Arbitrator and the Vexor and the Dominix are especially bad because they get drone bonuses. Myrmidons are rough as well. And Merms and Dommies really do tend to fit navigation mid-slots, uh, so they, you, do, you wind up with drones that are going even faster. Try to avoid uh, engaging these boats, especially in the beginning, unless you've got immediate backup. Here's the thing. Just because they've got drones doesn't mean they can kill you instantly. It just means that you can't sit there forever and hold them. You can still hold them for a couple of minutes, and that couple of minutes may be all the fleet needs to get in and get a heavier tackle on that. One of the things that's going to happen to you when you fly interceptors is you're going to be the warp in for the fleet. Um, so yeah, avoid arbitrators and vexers when you're way out from the fleet. Counter tackle things like the Hugin and the Rapier are your worst enemy, as is anything in the Blood Raider lineup. Uh, the Balgorn is kind of the the, the classic, but the Ashimu uh, Sleeper Social Club has a guy that likes to fly Ashimu, and uh, they get a web range bonus as well. Anything with a web range bonus is a real problem, and a Hugin um, uh, can get you can get webs on you at 60 kilometers. Now, the interceptor pilots like to say web equals death. It's not actually true. As long as you're not scrammed, a web means that I'm going 2,000 meters per second instead of four, and you can still get some good transversal that way. Um, but it does make you more vulnerable to damage, and your tank will start to fail faster. The Lachesis and the Arazu have bonus to warp scrambler range, and it's even longer than yours. Uh, be careful when approaching them. If you notice that they're scramming you, you can usually burn away. But yeah, be, be ready for, for trouble. And yeah, the Balgorn, Rapier, and Hugin won't have one web. They'll double and triple web you. Um, so be be ready to, to get in trouble. I have successfully tackled Hugins and Rapiers. I only do it when I've got a fleet right there to back me up, and we just need to make sure it can't warp off. Um, so, you know, don't, don't do that just like, oh, look, it's a Rapier. I'm going to get point. Do it when you know that you're going to be okay. Another thing that'll get you killed very quickly, by the way, is if you try to pull what's called an I Was There. Everyone remember the I Was There video? There is no surer way to die than flying right through the middle of a giant fleet of enemies. Oh, God, will you die so fast. Um, I've done it like five or six times, and generally what will happen is uh, it'll be because I'm orbiting somebody on the outside, and my orbit will take me right through them. My first pass through the middle of their fleet, I'll be fine. And I'll be like, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. Um, and then you come around for the second pass, and now they're ready for you, and here come the webs and the scrams and the drones, and oh, God, all the lasers ever. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've lost a number of interceptors for pulling an I was there. Don't, don't pull an I was there. Um, if you do pull an I was there, if you do find yourself flying through the middle of an enemy fleet, there is one mandatory piece that all interceptor pilots need to be aware of. I keep this URL uh, on bookmark, and you need this URL uh, for any time you fly your interceptor right through a whole bunch of ships, or any time, especially battleships, you'll be orbiting them, and they'll be shooting at you, and they won't be hitting you for any kind of damage at all. That is what this GIF is for. You need this GIF because you paste it in local whenever any, like a whole bunch of people are shooting at you and missing, and it really drives home the point that there's absolutely nothing they can do. You can thank Capricap for sure for that. Um, I, I have that bookmark now, and I post that in local anytime I fly through the middle of a fleet. And then energy newts. The other thing I hate tackling are tempests. Dominic says I actually see newts on less often, but I fly a newting dummy. Tempests almost always have two heavy newts. They can reach out to 25 kilometers. It's not impossible 
to point these guys. You just got to stay outside 25. Um, and one of the things that you'll have to learn is when you set a given orbit distance, how far out is your Inti actually going to orbit? Because um, you need to stay within your point range, which is usually about 30, but you got to stay outside 25.2, which is their newt range, and that's not a big window when you're doing four kilometers a second. Um, so uh, it takes a little getting used to, but definitely stay outside 25.2. I actually, I see a lot of dummies that are remote rep uh, fit the bank. I see a lot of spider dummies. And that's basically, you know, the tactics. Uh, most of the time, an interceptor will escape an engagement. I can't tell you the number of times that someone has whelped an entire fleet and I've been the ship that gets away simply because I can turn around, overheat my micro-warp drive, do seven and a half kilometers a second away from there, and then just get away. Um, you can also generally, like, jump into the middle of a gate camp and you'll be fine unless there's another interceptor there waiting for you. And even then, you can sort of pull it away from its fleet. Um, there's a lot that you can do. Um, ships that you're going to have a hard time tackling, Dramules will tear you up. Cinnables will tear you up because of their good tracking speed. But I've held on to, to, to Cinnables for a long time. The other thing that you need to get used to, by the way, is holding on to targets for a long, long time. Because sometimes it takes the fleet a long time to get to you. I'm going to show you a kill. That Tengu, let me tell you the story of that Tengu, and it'll, it'll give you some idea of what flying an interceptor is like, and then I will uh, close the class and open it to questions. So, we were in the Losec camp, and we were in uh, Dudrida, and someone said that there were some Goon Swarm pilots in, uh, in Hagler. Goon Swarm is negative five to us, we are allowed to engage them. These are GCC. I am very aggressive, I fly an interceptor, so... I said, I'll go GCC tackle this this goon Dominix. So we warp a fleet in, I grab point, and they oblige us by immediately being on everything that isn't me. So now these guys are GCC as well, and we can engage this nice, shiny uh, uh, goon swarm fleet. It was like two Dommies, some lighter stuff, and that Tengu. That Tengu was cruising around with that oversized afterburner, um, and uh, he was doing about 2.8 kilometers per second. None of the tackle frigates could get near him because they had to run their micro warp drives, and he was spamming out missiles that would just tear them apart. Um, so after, as we wrapped up the battle against the dummies and everything else, we had this big uni blob on the field, and this guy was just burning away. He was like 200 kilometers out. I look at that, and I say, you know what? I'm going to go chase this guy. So I hit my, my overheat, and I go tearing off after him. I overheat my micro-warp drive to as much as it can stand, and then I cruise up the rest of the way doing four kilometers a second. It takes me about, probably about two minutes to get point on the guy. Finally, I get point, and, uh, and I think he thought that he could kill me really quick because he starts spamming out missiles on me, uh, but I have defenders, so I start spamming defender missiles back. I wind up holding my... Um, holding point on this guy for a combined total of 20 minutes, okay, with him spamming missiles at me, and we've got blackbirds that keep warping to me and getting jams off, but, like, if you don't think that 20 minutes is a really, really, really long time, I'm here to tell you, that felt like an hour and a half. I actually had to warp out in the middle of the fight uh, because I, um, I, I had finally gone into structure. Uh, but because of my defender missiles and because of my ridiculously high speed, heavy missiles, even from a Tengu, with a, and he was a really good skilled Tengu pilot, didn't really do much to me. And Liam, my defenders did run out. After about 10 minutes, I was out of defenders. But at that point, um, we had a second interceptor on the field. I believe it was Rinna that had showed up and tried scramming him because we thought he was micro-warp driving. He wasn't, by the way. So the scram did nothing. Rinna went back to Dudrida, reshipped into a double web Tyrannus, and came back out. Um, and yeah, there's that double web Tyrannus that don't fit your Tyrannuses like that unless you know what you're doing. But Rinna and I have made a pretty good one-two combo out of me getting a long point and then Rinna showing up with a double web. This was the, the, the kill that really showed that off. So there Rinna and I are for another ten minutes holding on to this guy, desperate to like get the rest of the fleet on us. They just can't get in a range. Finally, Rinna comes out in pause number three. Double webs the guy. We get two more rifters with webs out there. He's got four webs on him now, and he's still doing like 500 meters per second. But that's close enough now that we can start warping in the rest of the fleet. And as the rest of the fleet lands, this guy eventually does burn down. But that fight took like 20 minutes. Um, that is what interceptors are about. It's about staying there, holding that point, no matter what is coming at you. It's going to take a while for you to be cool under fire. And sitting there for, for the last, you know, five minutes of that fight, I was in, like, 50% structure. My ship was on fire. It was fantastic. I'm briefcase tanking in my hull, and missiles keep coming at me, and we keep getting jams and then losing jams. It's a very back-and-forth affair. The important thing is for the interceptor pilot to know his ship, know what it's capable of, and know that, yeah, I can stick around for another couple of minutes or another couple of missiles, whichever comes first. 
and it winds up being this beautiful 2.8 billion is kill. We got that very early in the month, and it's been the number two kill on the board ever since. That is what interceptors are all about. Um, you'll find yourself in a lot of dead flat chases. You'll find yourself grabbing people on gates. You'll find yourself going fast. F Fleet commanders love you because you can get point from three jumps away and just sit there. Um, I can perma, uh, perma point uh, anything um, uh, that doesn't have missiles, basically, uh, that isn't a destroyer, because most cruiser guns can't track me. So I can just sit there orbiting you at 17 kilometers, and there's nothing you can do about it. So if your first instinct when you see a ship jumping in um, is to get in their face immediately and, and ruin their day, that's what interceptors are all about. I'm now going to open this to questions. I'm basically done teaching you guys. I've, I've now imparted upon you all my knowledge. Dustin Thillaire asks, is it necessary to have a mic to call a point on ship? Necessary? No. Is it really, 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 really good? Yes. And I really strongly recommend you getting a mic. You can get a mic from Best Buy for like 10 bucks. Uh, the Binky. That guy had ECM drones. I killed them. My pleasure, guys. Um, are there any questions? Go ahead and ask questions in class at a uni. Okay.